Good evening, and welcome to this edition of Mercy College News. I'm Natalie Tegeter. Spring semester is coming to an end, and many 2002 graduates are anticipating Mercy's 50th commencement ceremony. In a survey, the students of the class of 2002 revealed that while 92% are anticipating graduation, a surprising 40% have no immediate plans afterward. Security has always been an issue at college campuses, and Mercy College is no different. Here with more on this story to the is Natalie Tegeter. Hardly train station here at Mercy College. They're too slow. Students and faculty have expressed concerns about the safety of this path. The lamp posts, while plentiful, are dimly lit, if they're ever lit at all. It definitely could be worked on. Uh, some parts of it definitely need work, and uh, they could be safer. So you don't think that it's a safe place to walk at night, say? Not completely. At least not the path, which is uh, not made of good road. Um, it was kind of dark. Usually if you try to come in like maybe late nights, like 8, 9, it was kind of dark and you felt kind of insecure a little bit. Mr. DeCaro, the head of security at Mercy College, has said that there are talks in the works to make sure that the lighting situation is remedied. Um, on the Irvington section of the campus, uh, the lighting is uh, not as bright as we would like it to be. And uh, I think there are talks going on with Irvington. There are certain town ordinances that we have to comply with as far as how bright the lights can be. Um, so it's something we're looking into. At Mayor Hall, going down to the back parking lot, we are mandated by Irvington that we cannot go beyond a 100 watt bulb. It has to be in a certain light source uh, that is part of a permit process that we had to meet for uh, our Irvington uh, property. Uh, what we have done in the past is even though they have not blown out, we have replaced the lights on an ongoing basis. Uh, it has been discussed to possibly increase the number of lights that are on that pathway, but we cannot increase the actual illumination. The security department and maintenance have been working with the town in order to find a solution to the problem of poor lighting. This has obviously become an issue of safety. Is the campus secure enough at night so that the students and faculty feel comfortable walking here? <clears throat> Hopefully the college and the town can resolve this issue before anything serious occurs. Reporting for Mercy College News, I'm Natalie Tegeter. Trains, planes, and automobiles. Commuting to Mercy College is easier than most people would expect. Kelly Lopez has that story. Excluding the dorm residents, the majority of Mercy College students commute to the Dobbs Ferry campus. There are several ways of commuting. Traveling by train, how do you feel about your commute to Mercy College? I think it's an easier commute. I'd rather take the train than drive. How far of a distance are you coming from? I'm traveling from the Bronx, then I'll transfer it to a train in White Plains, and then I'll make it here an hour or so. Well, how do you feel about your commute to Mercy College? Well, it's a pretty much a long commute for me. I've taken the Sawmill North, <laughs> and with all the lights they have near, near Executive Boulevard and Yonkers, it seems like it just really slows down my commute. As but you can see, Mercy College is conveniently located in Dobbs Ferry and is very commuter friendly. Whether you're traveling by bus, car, or train, Mercy College is accessible to anyone. For Mercy College News, I'm Kelly Lopez. Well, summer has arrived early this year. Trees are blooming, the sky is blue, the air smells tropical, and it's time to break out those summer clothes. While some might think it's too hot too soon, others just enjoy what Mother Nature brings. The unusually warm temperatures this winter has brought up new concerns about the issues surrounding global warming. Global warming has been a topic of concern for over a decade now. We here at Mercy College have had the chance to interview some students and staff on their views of global warming. I think we need to protect what we have, um, the rainforest, the, the um, plant life that we have. I think we need to reduce our pollution. We might have to go to natural resources. I think we should investigate now before it's too late more of our natural resources instead of using all these produced oils in the air 
and the air pollution, the water pollution, I think we need to go back and protect the water and the airways. That has to be our priority right now. And, and uh, some, some of the things, things, things that we can do to do probably, probably help, help diminish, diminish the effect, the effect is, is um, um, carpooling, carpooling is definitely, is definitely one, of one of the big things that, things that we, should we should do. They should have stiff laws, laws on, on emissions, emissions controls for the cars. And basically, um, we should all pitch in just to make this world a better place to live in. I'm here with Ken Haley, a local resident of Irvington. Ken, how do you feel about this being such a warm winter? Well, it's very nice for me right now, but I think uh, it's, it's a very incredible that we're having this kind of weather at the end of February. Do you think that we will pay consequences due to this being such a warm winter? I'm not fully convinced, but uh, this is very strange to me, and I didn't used to believe uh, there was a global warming trend, but uh, this convinces me now that there possibly could be one. Due to the obvious concerns of global warming, people are now starting to take notice and hopefully take their own actions. From Mercy College News in Dobbs Ferry, Kelly Lopez. September 11th still weighs heavily on America's conscience, but New Yorkers showing their spirit have begun to move on. It's been seven months since the terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center. In that time, we've seen so many changes here in New York. Mandatory carpooling, stepped up security at the airports, and a renewed sense of patriotism and courage from the citizens of New York. But now that ground zero is almost cleared, the big question is, what is its future? What would you like to see done with the actual site of ground zero? Well, that I think should be directed not only to the citizens of New York, but also to the, f the family members that lost their, lost their loved ones in that tragedy. Well, I think that there should be some type of memorial built there. Um, I'm not really sure if people should start working there um, or if it should just be a place of remembrance. Knowing that it's the city and the country that we live in, it's a part of who we are, that it should be a memorial for some time, but that we should definitely rebuild, that we shouldn't allow this to um, go on continuously. Excavation at the site is way ahead of schedule and is expected to be complete by summer. As a result, the city has not been able to come to a decision about the fate of Ground Zero. We've got everybody down here working together. I don't care if you're New York State Department of Transportation, City Department of Transportation, Tully Construction, uh, the, the contractors, everybody down here wants to deliver something tangible to this city that they can see we're moving forward. What do you think about the temporary Towers of Light Memorial that the city erected near Ground Zero? I think it's really nice and I think it is a remembrance and um, I think it looks beautiful and I'm, I'm glad that they did it. I think it's nice. I think certain people um, take that symbolic stuff to heart. Um, it's commemorative. It's, it's, you know, maybe more money should be spent on compensating victims' families and actually getting the site cleared and things like that. But things like this are nice too. You know, it makes people feel better and it brings people together. Many people seem to want a permanent memorial at Ground Zero. Something to remember what happened there and to never forget how so many sacrificed so much. But in a city like New York, where things move along at such a fast pace, people would also like to see the site be used to help bring economic recovery back to New York. With 16 acres of property available, the city should be able to rebuild and set aside some acreage for a memorial. As with so many issues in this city since September 11th, one thing is for certain, only time will tell. Reporting for Mercy College News, I'm Natalie Tegeter. The newest addition to Mercy College Prestige might be these luxury apartments built right in their backyard. Even though most of them are currently occupied, construction is still underway for more riverfront properties. But unless you have an upward of a million dollars, then you might find yourself living in one of these luxury homes. Moans, groans, and things that go bump in the night. The Mercy College dorms have their share of not-so-welcome visitors. One of the halls walking to the Southwest too, um, get the feeling that someone's, you know, watching me or walking with me. You just get an eerie feeling. It's really scary, like, to walk down the hall, especially, like, when it's, when nobody's around. And, um, I don't know if anybody else feels it, but I do. When I 
just walk to the bathroom or something and like I could hear things upstairs and nobody's upstairs. <laughs> Who would imagine that there's a dark side to this lovely riverfront campus? In Macaulay too, there was a nun and she jumped out the window because, I don't know, she was having some problems or whatever. And she landed on the, the pool right outside the building, but it was empty so she died. And now she comes back and she haunts the building. Not everyone here at Mercy College believes the haunted dorm story. I've been here for two years. I've lived in the dorms for two years, and I don't believe in the ghost stories that have been going around for a long time now. Nothing weird happens to me, nothing unusual, no lights coming on, nothing. So I believe it's just a fabrication, an urban legend, or what have you. Even though most of the students stand by their stories, no one will ever know for sure, but the tales of the haunted dorms will continue to be a part of student life here at Mercy College. This is Andrea reporting from Dobbs Ferry. Well, if ghost stories don't make your skin call, Nicole Hooper has a report that just might. Hello, this is Nicole coming to you from the Mercy College cafeteria here in Dobbs Ferry, and we're here to see how the students like the food here at the Passport Cafe. Well, some, some days I think it's good, um, other days you just have to order out. I mean, so they either like it's too salty or it's just not enough seasoning or, or something like that. I don't even know half the time what we're eating at dinner because there's no labels on anything to know what we're eating. I tried ordering stuff from the grill and I get really sick from it. Even though the food has not improved, the ambiance has changed with a fresh coat of paint and new chairs in the cafeteria. They can change the, you know, the atmosphere in here fine, but the food still sucks. Right now we got the play presentation stuff, so we see, like, try, to, try new stuff to, like, to make it look better. This is the food preparation area where students come to get their food. I'm a vegetarian, so I'm always trying to find, like, things that I can eat here, and there isn't really a lot for me to eat here, especially at dinner. Many of the students come to the Passport Cafe because of the convenience. But what they give in money does not coincide with the value of the food. Well, I mean, it's, it's cheaper than ordering out. Sometimes if I don't have, I can't get to a store to buy something or I don't have enough money to order out, it, I mean, it's okay to eat here. It's pretty convenient because they're open most of the time, but I wish we were able to get into the cafe more instead of just having the option of the buffet at dinner. According to students, food here at Mercy College would definitely not receive a four-star review. And even though cafeteria says that they are trying to improve the appearance of the food, it seems to be the taste that is desired by the students. Coming soon in fall 2002, the Mercy College Dobbs Ferry campus will open its airways to all radio production students. WDFH will be on its way to broadcasting at last. Heading up this program is Mark Sophus and his elite team of on-air technical staff and disc jockeys. WDFH will reach the Dobbs Ferry and Ossining area on your dial at 90.3 FM. Need that chemistry book right away? Well, Mercy College students won't find that or any other books at the college bookstore. Eric Gebert has this story. Hi, my name is Eric Gebert and I'm reporting here at Mercy College in front of the Learning Center, which was formerly the bookstore. And today we are finding out whether or not students and staff feel that the bookstore is an important place for them to obtain their books and materials. Oh, I think we definitely need a Learning Center. I teach some developmental math courses and they definitely need a Learning Center and a place to go. Well, I use Learning Center all of the time and uh, I believe they do a very, very good job. I use a learning center even for my, uh, some my major classes. Some students believe a learning center is a good idea, but it is not as important as having a bookstore. I think having the bookstore was more important than having the learning center. I personally don't benefit from it at all. I still feel that there should be a physical location where people should go and get some type of books at least stationary pencil. Yeah, I think the bookstore was beneficial to me. I miss having to go down and buy a t-shirt or a bumper sticker or something like that. Here at Mercy College in front of the Learning Center, which was formerly the bookstore here at Mercy College, and uh, we have found out that the Learning Center has been a very beneficial place for students, but the lack of a bookstore has deeply affected students in obtaining 
books and materials. So we have found out that a bookstore is needed in the near future. I'm Eric Ebert reporting from Mercy College. Well, students, it's time to open your wallets because the cost of your education is going up again. Vasily Pakapayev is on the story. As we know, uh, Mercy tuition getting high every year. Uh, many of us received a letter stating that uh, tuition is going to be $5,000 starting from the next semester. We're here today at the, mil at the main building uh, at the uh, Dobbs Ferry campus to find out what uh, students and faculty feel about tuition increase. I don't, I don't like the fact that it's going higher and, and uh, if they are going to make it higher, they're going to ha have to offer more services. Costs uh, for everything keeps increasing. Um, medical coverage, insurance, uh, the cost of services, utilities, all kinds of things keep increasing. Um, so in that sense, we can't expect that costs are going to be fixed forever. Students think that tuition is high and they feel that they're not getting enough for the money they spend. Compared to, I don't really know how much the other schools charge, but uh, compared to the services they offer, yes. I think it's high, very high. Uh, do you think that uh, Mercy tuition is too high? Yes, I do, because um, a lot of minorities now is having problems with the financial aid now, because I heard that they were cutting back on certain things, like if you're in a state school, you don't get as much as you would in a private school anymore. <coughs> so. I think it's it's really bad that you know she's raising tuition and a lot of people are not going to have the opportunity to go to school anymore. I think before it was good, but now they are announced that they're going to be like more than five thousand dollar. I think it's too much high for the poor student, and I don't think it's a good decision. If they want to make the new institution like in Manhattan or they if they want to upgrade, they they will add their fees too. There are going to be a lot of students. After when, when they open the new institution, then they're going to be new students. Why they are taking that money to us? As we uh, interviewed uh, students and uh, faculty members, uh, <coughs> we found out uh, the split uh, opinion uh, on this matter. Uh, students think that uh, tuition is a little bit too high. Uh, however, the faculty members say that uh, it's normal because uh, the payroll depends on this. So, uh, I'm Vasily Putkapayev reporting for Mercy College News. And that's it for this edition of Mercy College News. Stay tuned for our next broadcast at 11 o'clock. I'm Natalie Tegeter. Thank you and good night.